All right, everybody, buckle up. If you think you know Earth well, think again. Because uh, today we're diving deep. It's more than just rocks and trees, right? Way more. You sent us some NASA articles that just blew my mind, honestly. Oh, yeah, I saw those. They're incredible. A lot to unpack there. You know those basic facts we all got in school, like Earth is the third rock from the sun, fifth largest planet, blah, blah, blah. Right, the basic. We're going way past that this time. Think early Earth. Forces strong enough to rearrange continents. And don't forget that underwater mountain range that puts the Himalayas to shame. Oh, yeah, we're definitely getting to that. I was blown away when I read about that. <laughs> um, but first, I think we should... Um... Start with the basics just to get everyone on the same page. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so we've all heard that comparison. If the sun was a doorway, Earth would be the size of a nickel. It's a classic for a reason. Really puts things in perspective. It's humbling, isn't it? Makes all our problems seem kind of small. It does, but it also highlights just how precious and unique our planet is. All those factors that had to come together just right for life to exist. It's mind-blowing when you think about it. Not just the size, but our place in the solar system, the moon's influence, the very ground beneath our feet. And that ground, it's not as solid as we think. Oh, yeah. Plate tectonics, right? Yeah. That stuff still kind of freaks me out. It's like a slow motion puzzle with those massive plates constantly bumping and grinding against each other. And that's where things get really interesting. Mountains forming, ocean trenches, volcanoes. It's like a whole other world down there. So wait, you're telling me continents just drift around like giant rafts, always uh, on the move? In a way, yeah. The continents we know today were once part of a supercontinent called Pangaea. No way. Really? I'd never heard of that before. It's true. And millions of years from now, they'll likely form another supercontinent. It's a constant cycle of change and movement. So it's not just continents drifting around. It's more like a slow motion demolition derby down there. Exactly. And you know where those plates meet at the boundaries, that's where things get really wild. You get mountains being pushed up, ocean trenches forming, volcanoes erupting. And earthquakes. Yeah. Don't forget earthquakes. Mother Nature really likes to shake things up, huh? It's all that energy building up beneath the surface. But, you know, as destructive as these forces can be, they're also essential for life on Earth. Okay, now that's a plot twist. How can volcanoes and earthquakes be good? Sounds like something out of a disaster movie. Well, think about it. Volcanoes release gases that help form our atmosphere. And those shifting plates, they actually help regulate the Earth's temperature over millions of years. Wow. So it's like a balancing act, a delicate dance between destruction and creation. Exactly. And it's been going on for billions of years. It's amazing how much is happening beneath our feet that we don't even realize. Mm -hmm. Speaking of things we don't realize, you've got a note here about this underwater mountain range, the mid-ocean ridge. You're saying it's even bigger than the Himalayas. It's true. It's a vast underwater volcanic mountain chain that stretches for thousands of miles. I had no idea. And it's all underwater. How have I never seen this on a map? It's mostly hidden beneath the ocean's surface, but it's there, a testament to the incredible power of plate tectonics. So how does it even work? How do you get a mountain range forming underwater? Imagine two oceanic plates slowly moving apart, and as they separate, molten rock from the Earth's mantle rises up to fill the gap. Okay, so it's like the Earth is healing itself, filling in the cracks. In a way, yes. And over millions of years, this process creates an immense underwater mountain chain that circles the globe. That's the mid-ocean ridge. That's wild. What's the marine life like down there? I can't even imagine. It's a whole other world down there. Extreme pressure, total darkness, but still teeming with life. Scientists are discovering new species all the time. It's a constant source of new discoveries. That's incredible. Okay, so we've got these tectonic plates constantly shifting because of heat from the Earth's core, right? Exactly. That heat is the engine that drives plate tectonics. What else does that heat affect? Well, remember those volcanoes we were talking about? They're another result of Earth's internal heat. And they play a crucial role in shaping our planet, even its atmosphere. Volcanoes shaping our atmosphere. Okay, now you're really blowing my mind. How does that even work? Well, we've got to take a trip back in time, billions of years ago, to Earth's early days. Like way back. Way back. The atmosphere back then was nothing like what we breathe today. Think like a toxic soup. Oh, lovely. So no Instagram-worthy sunsets back then. Definitely not. But those volcanoes, they were spewing out all sorts of gases, water vapor, carbon dioxide, nitrogen. Basically, the ingredients for life as we know it. Exactly. Over millions of years, these volcanic gases, along with other processes, transformed the atmosphere into something that could actually support life. It's a pretty incredible story. And all this time... 
The ground shifting, volcanoes are erupting, life is trying to get a foothold. Man, it really puts things in perspective, doesn't it? It really does. We often forget that we're living on a dynamic planet, always changing, always evolving. Speaking of evolving, let's talk more about this atmosphere we take for granted. It's not just a history lesson, right? It's what keeps us alive. Absolutely. It's our shield, our climate control system, and a delicate balance of gases that makes life on Earth possible. One of the coolest things is how it protects us from all that space debris constantly hurtling towards us. Wait, you mean like those shooting stars we try to make wishes on? Exactly. Those aren't stars, they're meteoroids. Bits of rock and dust burning up in the atmosphere. Without the atmosphere, our planet would be riddled with craters. Wow, so we've got this invisible force field protecting us 24-7. It's pretty amazing, and it's not just space debris. Our atmosphere also shields us from harmful solar radiation. And that's where a magnetic field comes in. It's like a super shield. Okay, you're going to have to break this one down for me. Magnetic field, solar radiation, it's a lot to process. Imagine a giant bar magnet inside Earth with north and south poles. That's our planet's magnetic field in a very simplified way. This field acts like a shield, deflecting most of the sun's charged particles, also known as solar wind, around our planet. So it's like Earth has a force field against a giant hairdryer in space. Pretty much. Without the magnetic field, the solar wind would strip away our atmosphere and bombard the surface with harmful radiation, making life on Earth, you know, yeah. impossible. Not ideal. I'm really starting to appreciate all this stuff we never even think about. It's mind-blowing when you consider that all these factors, the atmosphere, the magnetic field, the perfect distance from the sun, even liquid water, they all just came together against all odds. It's truly remarkable. Talk about winning the cosmic lottery. You've got those notes there about Earth's formation. Billions of years in the making, that's no small feat. From a swirling cloud of dust and gas to, to it's all. It really is mind-boggling when you think about the scale of time and all that had to happen. It's like, what are the chances? Exactly. And yet, here we are. Here we are, sitting on a planet that really is one in a billion. Mm. But like any good lottery winner, we've got to be responsible, right? Especially with climate change and all the other challenges facing our planet. Those articles you sent, they don't sugarcoat things. It's true. Earth has been doing its thing for billions of years, finding a balance. But we've become a force of nature ourselves, and not always in a good way. We have a responsibility to understand our impact and find ways to live more sustainably. It can feel overwhelming, you know. Where do you even start? It's about understanding that everything is connected. Those articles emphasize that a lot, the atmosphere, the oceans, the land, even the Earth's core, they're all connected. What we do in one area affects the whole planet. It's like we've been given this incredible gift, but we've also been handed a whole lot of responsibility. Exactly. We can't just take it for granted. We have to be better caretakers. Absolutely. So how do we do that? Where do we even start? Well, those articles you sent, they highlight how interconnected everything is. The atmosphere, the oceans, the land, even the Earth's core. Right. It's all one giant system spinning through space. Exactly. And what we do in one area can have ripple effects across the entire planet. So like if I decide to eat one less burger a week, that actually makes a difference. Well, every little bit helps, right? It's more about the bigger picture, the choices we make as a society. Okay. So what are some of those bigger choices? What can we do to, you know, not mess things up even more? Well, transitioning to renewable energy is huge. The articles talk about solar, wind, geothermal. Right, those are becoming more and more common. Exactly. We need to move away from fossil fuels. That's the big one. And protecting our forests, they're essential for absorbing carbon dioxide. More trees, less pollution. Yep. Got it. Yep. But it can't just be on, like, governments and big corporations, right? What about us regular folks? Absolutely. Every little bit helps, like you said. We can reduce our energy consumption, use public transportation more, be more mindful of our consumption habits in general. So, like, being aware of where our stuff comes from, how it's made, all of that. Exactly. It all adds up. You know, it's funny. We started this deep dive feeling pretty small, like a nickel compared to the sun. Right. Humbling. Totally. But now I'm feeling oddly empowered, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah, we're just tiny humans on a giant rock. But we have knowledge, we have each other, and we can actually make a difference. That's the spirit. It's not about feeling overwhelmed. It's about understanding the challenges and finding solutions together. We're all in this together, right? Team Earth. That's what it's all about. Well, you've given us a lot to think about today. Earth. It's dynamic. It's resilient. 
and it's constantly reminding us that we're part of something much bigger than ourselves. We're all just along for the ride. An incredible, awe-inspiring ride. Couldn't have said it better myself. Yeah. So to all you listeners out there, thanks for joining us on this deep dive. If you want to learn more about this incredible planet we call home, check out the show notes for links to those NASA articles we talked about. And until next time, keep looking up, keep learning, and keep appreciating this amazing planet we call home.